F.L. Smith's Advanced Filtration Technologies Division manufactures filter bags, filter bag cages, provides bag house accessories, engineering support, installation services, and filter bag lab analysis. In this video, we will discuss and demonstrate the proper procedures for the installation and operation of dust collector filter bags. For this section of the video, we will be focusing on pulse jet filter bags. When undertaking a filter bag changeout, preparation is key. There are several steps that must be done to ensure the long-term success and viability of your filter bags. Prior to the installation of your filter bags, you will want to inspect the sidewalls, ceiling, and tube sheet of the dust collector. You will want to make sure these areas are clean and free of corrosion or material buildup. Another thing you'll want to check is the tube sheet holes to make sure there's no burrs or material buildup or corrosion. Finally, you will want to review the blowpipe to make sure none of the blowpipe holes have elongated as this could lead to insufficient cleaning. Once these steps are completed, we can move on to the actual installation of the filter bags. Now this step is not as simple as it seems. Many filter bags are equipped with an EPTFE membrane that is laminated to the surface of the fabric. This membrane is a very fragile product and must be handled with care. Membrane is a great product which allows for greater filtration and dust release without having a pre-coat. However, these benefits only exist when the membrane is fully intact. That is what makes the handling of membrane filter bags so vital. Because membrane is so thin, it is important to remove any sharp objects from your person or the area you will be handling the material. Even the edge of a tube sheet is enough to scratch the surface of a filter bag. That's why we provide installation sleeves to safely install filter bags while maintaining the membrane. The first step in the installation is to secure the installation sleeve in the tube sheet hole. This will create a funnel effect that will allow you to safely install the dust collector bag. Now we will feed the bag safely in there protecting the membrane. Once this step is completed, you can remove the sleeve. All that's left now is the proper snapping in of the filter bag. That pop indicates that you have a good solid seal. Here is an alternate view of the proper installation technique. Notice the compression of the snap band when it is being installed into the cell plate. You will want to make sure that the snap band groove is perfectly aligned with the cell plate hole. A misaligned or cross snapped bag can cause opacity as well as bags falling into the hopper. Once the bags are properly installed, we can now move to the installation of the filter cages. This is a standard filter cage. However, before you install them, you will want to review the condition of your cages. This cage has bent wires, a broken wire here, and sharp edges at the bottom. You'll also want to keep a lookout for corrosion. Any of these things will cause failures in your filter bags. You should discard any cages that are not fit for service. You don't want to ruin a brand new set of filter bags by installing them with damaged cages. Now that we have ensured that the cages are fit for service and in good condition, we will demonstrate the proper installation. When installing a cage, you don't want to just drop it in. You want to gently guide it all the way to the bottom of the filter bag. Now that we have demonstrated the proper procedures for the handling and installation of pulse jet filter bags, let's get into the details of operating your bag house. Due to the wide variety of filter bag applications, there are various different materials used in their construction. Different fabrics have different maximum operating temperatures, chemical resistances, and abrasion resistance. Here is a breakdown of common filter medias and their operating temperatures. If you exceed these, you could significantly decrease the lifespan of your filter bag. Another critical factor in the life of your filter bag is ensuring that you are using the correct pulse pressure and the correct pulse time during your cleaning cycles. The cleaning time of a pulse should always be one-tenth of a second or 100 milliseconds, but the recommended pulse pressure can vary based on the material of the bag. If you are pulsing a woven fiberglass bag, we recommend an initial pulse of 50 to 60 PSI. Alternately, we recommend an initial pulse pressure of 80 to 90 PSI cleaning on a felt material such as aramid or polyester. There are two different ways to set the frequency of your cleaning cycle. The first way is on time cleaning. This is when you set up a specific time-based cleaning schedule for the pulsing of your filter bags. 
unfortunately this can lead to overcleaning or undercleaning of your pulse jet filter bags. Undercleaning can cause high differential pressure while overcleaning can lead to premature wear. For on time cleaning, we recommend cleaning every 20 seconds. It is important to allow enough time for your air header to recover to an appropriate level before the next pulse is engaged. The other way is on demand cleaning. This is when the bag house uses differential pressure high and low set points to trigger the pulsing cycle. This ensures that you won't overclean or underclean your filter bags. When using on demand cleaning, we recommend a starting differential pressure set point of three inches on the low point and four inches on the high point. Each bag house is different and these set points may need to be modified for your individual situation, but these are a very good starting point for your operation. Now that we have reviewed these operating procedures, let's move on to some preventative maintenance that you can perform to eliminate problems before they arise. When your bag house is down, you should utilize this opportunity to inspect some of the critical components of your bag house. For this part, we're going to focus on solenoids, diaphragm valves, and your clean air plenum. Diaphragm valves and solenoids are critical to the cleaning and dust shedding process in a bag house. If either of these is compromised, you could see elevated differential pressure and bag failures. When you are going through your pulsing sequence, if you notice that one row is not pulsing or that the pulses are drawn out, you may need to replace your diaphragms on your diaphragm valve. For this demonstration, we will be replacing the diaphragms on a double diaphragm valve. A double diaphragm valve has a large diaphragm and a small diaphragm. We typically would start with the large diaphragm. First, you'll need to remove the bolts. Once you have removed the bolts, you can lift off the lid and see the spring and diaphragm that you will be replacing. Remove these and ensure that the seating area is clean and free of scratches to ensure a proper seal. Once you've done that, you can insert your new diaphragm. It's important to make sure that it is seated properly and lined up correctly. Then you will insert the spring into the spring channel. After you have ensured that this is lined up correctly, you can reinstall the bolts. During this process, you will want to use a procedure similar to replacing the lug nuts on your car tire, which is to install the bolts crossways and gradually. When you're doing this, make sure you don't over tighten the bolts as this could strip them. Now that we have completed the replacement of the large diaphragm, we can move on to the small one. You will follow the same procedure. It's important to note that we always recommend changing both diaphragms on a double diaphragm valve. Now that we have completed the replacement of both diaphragms, the diaphragm valve is ready for reinstallation. After you have inspected these, you will want to look at the clean air plenum. What you are looking at when you evaluate this is that the clean air plenum is clean and no residual dust is present that the blow pipes are in position, aligned, and fastened properly, that bulkhead connectors are tight and in good working order, and that the doors 
and the door gasketing is in good condition to allow for a proper seal. We have reviewed several factors that contribute to the lifespan and the efficiency of your filter bags, but there are still some very important things for us to discuss. One critical issue with bag houses that operate at high temperatures is making sure that you get to your running temperature quickly and efficiently on startup. The goal here is to pass through the dew point as quickly as possible. This goes for when you are shutting down a bag house as well. If you linger too long in the dew point, you will introduce too much moisture into the bag house, which can have a very negative impact on the system and the filter bags. In addition, you need to consider acid dew point. For example, this graph illustrates the relationship between concentration of sulfuric acid and the dew point temperature of the process gas. Once the liquid acid is formed, solids are deposited on the fibers, which can ultimately cause bag failures. Another thing to consider when starting up is pre-coating your filter bags. FL Smith can provide our pre-coating procedures to you upon request. Remember that EPTFE membrane filter bags do not require pre-coating unless your gas stream has hydrocarbons present. When starting up, you will also want to monitor the differential pressure and temperature of the bag house to make sure you are staying within the operating parameters of the filter bag. Finally, we want to review the proper procedures for performing a dye test with leak detection powder. FL Smith can provide you with various colors and sizes of leak detection powder. If you see an opacity issue or some visible bypass of the bag house, you may want to perform a dye test. To perform a dye test, you will introduce leak detection powder, a neon colored powder at the inlet of the bag house. The most important thing is to ensure that the powder gets evenly distributed in the air entering the bag house. After you have introduced the powder and shut down the unit, you can inspect the bags from the clean side of the bag house. Using a UV or black light flashlight, you will be able to easily identify any leaks, as the dye powder will glow under the black light. Performing a dye test and accurately mapping bag failures will help you to see trends and indicate issues that need to be addressed. Thank you for watching. We hope this video has been helpful and informative.